What's going on, beautiful people of YouTube? This is Reen Bean. Welcome to another episode of Life of a Game Hunter slash Collector. The series I started up to give you guys a tidbit of what it's like to be a Game Hunter slash Collector. The shit you deal with all the damn time. And what is going to be on today's agenda is really just two things. Number one, we're going to do a AGS 101 Game Boy Advance mod. Meaning we're going to take a Game Boy Advance and we're going to put a... Uh, do I have my SP somewhere? No idea, but we're gonna, I don't know where my SP is. But we're going to put the uh, SP-101 screen inside of this. That way we can back like this. This is the first time I've ever done this mod. Um, I'm more of the repair guy, but someone sent it in. And they said, you know what? Use it as an episode, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to get that done. Also, someone sent in a DS for repair, so we're going to check that out. But it's mainly going to be focused on doing this mod. So if you've never done one, you can learn with me. Um, with that said, guys, I think there's only like four days left at the time this episode is going to come out for you to enter in to the refurbished Nintendo NES giveaway. If you want to be entered, all you got to do is hit the link in the description, or I'm sure I'm going to have it in the pinned comments. Get yourself a refurbished NES done by yours truly with a bunch of games, a power pad, a whole bunch of everything. Um, let's go out into this shop, guys. Let's get to work. Alright guys, so here we are in the shop, and like I said, we are, we're not going to be able to get much done today. This is going to be more of a tutorial on how to do this. It kind of doubles as a learning experience for me, because I've never done one. And a subscriber sent this, and he says you can use mine, make an episode out of it. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. He bought, all the, he bought the kit itself, and this is the 32-pin set. This is not the 40-pin. So there are two variants to doing a GBA uh, 101 mod uh, depending on what kit you get this one. I believe is a little bit more simplistic. It, it doesn't seem like a hard mod uh, But I'm sure I might run into something where I'm just Inexperienced with I just modding is not something that I've, I've done a lot of I've been getting into modding But I'm more of the repair type person as a lot of you know, but I, I've always wanted to do one of these I've just never had a spare 101 To break down now you can get these kits. These kits are like 40 45 bucks uh, I've just never done it. So anyways, we're going to start off with this one right here. You will know that you need the 32 pin set uh, depending when you look in the battery compartment. Right here you can see some numbers. If it starts with 1, you need the 32 pin. If it starts with 0, you need the 40. So we got the, the 1. This is going to be a 32. Uh, so in order to open this thing up, we're going to need a tri-wing. Which, that is, it's hard for me to see. I swear my eyes are getting bad. Um, that is the small Phillips, which there is one right here underneath the battery compartment. It's the only one that has a Phillips to open in this thing up. And we're going to set all our screws off to the side here. Now, like I said, it's going to be more of a tutorial for you guys out there if you ever wanted to do one of these. Um, and again, I am not the professional on this. This is, this is the first time I've ever done this mod. But I, it's like a surgeon watching before he does any type of surgery. He's never done. I've watched a whole bunch of videos. Where is my tri-wing at? I'm sure y'all, you guys will see jumps, but it, it, I'm not going to skip over the stuff that you need to know. There we go. Alright, so let's remove all these screws here. I'm that, it had a game in there. I'm curious on what game that is. We'll have to use it to test whenever we get everything said and done. Alright, so we're going to pull the back off this thing here. And this is going to be the time to clean this unit. I am going to clean it for the person just so he gets it. It's going to be nice and beautiful. Um, so in order to do that, uh, since you're going to have it completely disassembled, just make sure you're not washing anything that's important. Um, I actually had someone message me today on Instagram wanting to know the best way to clean Game Boys. And honestly, what I do is I'll get a strainer, a colander, you know, this, it's the same thing. And um, I will put all my plastic parts in there that way they don't get it on the sink and use cold water, some soap, and some elbow grease. And usually does just fine. Um, all right, so we got this thing open. We got to take out, uh, was it two screws here, I believe? So we got one here. I need to get a hex head for my, uh, uh, what is it? Damn. Oh, dropping screws on the inside here. I think the power button. I got to get that screw back out. Uh, but for my uh, electric screwdriver, I know they make a hex head tri-wing, I just, I just yet to get one. 
All right, is it just the two? All right, so with those two, let's go ahead and pull out all the pieces here. Very carefully, so like I said, the, all these pieces, it's time to clean them because you can set, you can tell that they're dirty. All right, so the next step is we got to remove this ribbon right here, but in order to do that, it's got these clips on either side. They hold it down, they lock it into place. Um, I'm just going to use a small precision flathead if I have one. Oh my goodness. That's going to be precision enough for me. It's not, not really, but I can do it. I don't have any fingernails, as a lot of you know. Be real slow on them. Don't yank them out. Just kind of very slowly get on either side. Go back and forth until you feel it both give. Now with that out, all you got to do, let's go ahead and get these shoulders out. There's that screw. Don't want to lose you. Alright, so now we're going to lift up. We'll come backwards with it and just very slowly we're going to pull that ribbon out. There we go. So there's that unit right here. We want to deal with that in a little bit. We'll go ahead and make sure anything else that is stuck to it, such as the little stickies for the contact. Pull out all the buttons. Like this thing's going to be completely disassembled. Go ahead and get those buttons out. All right, so now the next step is we need to remove the old screen. Um, again, I'm going to use my little flathead here, and underneath the ribbon, um, I'm going to come down and try to wedge in there. There we go. There's that. I'm just going to go ahead and pull it on out. There's the old screen, which I will save. You never know. I might come across the GBS. It's completely busted. Seems like an easy swap. Now the kit that he's got actually has a very nice glass screen. It's actually might sell me on one of these kits. Speaker doesn't look too good. I'm going to see how that sounds. If, if anything, I might change that out. So we got a gasket right down here. Go ahead and rip that out. Oof. Sticky. Alright, so here is the actual unit itself. I'm going to leave that screen on there because I can change it when I'm done. Now the next step, which is about the most tedious part that I've seen, and I don't have a Dremel to do this, but I do have uh, an exacto set, a little small razor uh, razor knife set. And the problem is, is when you take this screen right here and you set it down in there, there's plastic bits on the bottom where, where it raises up and it just does not sit flush. So we have to completely eliminate all that plastic. And this is where it becomes very tedious. Now I've seen a handful of people do it a few different ways. Um, I'm, I'm still on the fence on how I want to do it. And what I mean by that is they can take their X-Acto blade, be very careful with these things. These things are literally razors on a stick. Um, and they can notch it on either side right here. That way when it sits in, it doesn't really move around much. Um, but I don't know. I think I'm just going to go ahead and just remove all of it because I, with the board on the back, it, it'll hold it in place. If anything, we can make some adjustments. So what I'm going to do, take this screen and put that over there in the safety. And you'll notice there's little ridges everywhere. We got there's little uh, little bits all throughout here. You got to get rid of all that. It's all got to be flush. So we're going to remove all that, and this is when it's going to be tedious. What type of blades do I have? Anything? How's that one going to work? Oh yeah, this is going to be <laughs> this is going to be tedious right here. If I I wish I had a Dremel. Um, so this is where you're going to see some time jumps for sure. Uh, and then I'll come back to you and show you how my progress is when we're done. Alright guys, so I have finished reaming all this out. And I honestly, I, I let me show you how I did this. It is not as bad as people as people have said in videos. Like I mean, it, it was tedious, but it probably took me all of about 10 minutes. That's not bad once I got into the groove of it. Now I did decide to leave these little notches here. And I'm going to show you why. And I've seen some other person do this, but not a lot of people do. But I like the idea of it. And it just stabilizes this screen a little bit better. Let me get it up in there, actually. And it just rests right in those nudges. And I like that idea. It's a little bit extra work. Like, I probably could have done it all in maybe seven minutes. But I took the extra minutes and knocked that out. I did have to change blades more than once. But that's I probably because I'm just getting used to it. And I, I snapped the end off one. I went ahead and cleaned 
the console itself. I went in there, scrubbed it up, got the buttons cleaned up. Now it's time for assembly. Um, so what we're going to do, we got the screen right here. These have a protective film on them. This is the time that you will take it off. Go ahead and blow all this here. I never have nails, so I got to use something to pry with. Being very careful not to hit the screen, but luckily it's over the actual plastic of it or the uh, metal casing of it. Oh, that's beautiful. And then we're going to drop this in. Ooh, and of course, I got a fingerprint on it already. I, uh, I, I was like, oh man, I think my finger's touching it. Very careful. Awesome. Game Gear screens are really a pain because they scratch. I mean, you can look at it wrong and it'll scratch. That one does not appear to be the case. All right, so we drop that in. Now we got to put all of our buttons back in. All right, now before we put the back on, uh, let's go ahead and attach the uh, connector here. And what this does is turns that ribbon into one that we can actually use with the original model. So we're going to open this up very nice and carefully here. And it does have one wire that we got to solder. And I looked at the point that I got to solder, and I will say that's a pretty damn small, small spot, but it doesn't seem that bad. As long as you do it right, tin this wire in a quick zap. By theory, it should go. It should go just fine. All right. So with this, the way this is going to work, let me just make sure that I'm orienting myself correctly. You can see all these metal shavings everywhere. I tried to get rid of most of them before I finished up. I'm just wanting to make sure this is going in correctly. And that. Yep. All right, so this has a little thing that we need to pull up on as that goes in. I'm being very careful here because I've never used one of these. Comes up and out, I believe. A lock in. Yep, there we go. It pulls back. Make sure we got this right. That's going to flip over. And then this is going to go in this way. This is kind of confusing with the orientation here. Go in there very calmly. And then lock that ribbon down, which we did there. And now this will fold back once we get this on. So we got that on. Let's go ahead and uh, completely assemble this thing back together. Or at least this part right here. Just a speaker. Just a little dusty. And since this whole thing's cleaned up now, go ahead and hit that a little bit, being careful. Oh, and now since this is open, would be a great time to hit up the contacts with some rubbing alcohol. Dip that. Oh, I'm an idiot. This will come up, I believe. We're going to fold, fold this so that it can pull out easily and go into the new ribbon slot. All right, so what, what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and attach the ribbon and, ribbon and fold it back down and then go ahead and screw it down since it, it is up right here. Now with those smudges pulled back, or with the sides pulled back, we're gonna go ahead and slide this ribbon in carefully. And then we're gonna lock in the sides. See how we're looking here. Buttons feel good. Got that folded there. Now this is probably going to be the most pain in the ass part, but it's not really a, a hard part. 
it's going to be a pain for me because my fine tipped end for my soldering iron I have broke off so mine is a little bit thicker but like I said as long as I'm careful I don't, I don't need to add any solder I'm just going to use what's tinned on there now I will say with the 40 pin set there is another step I believe you have to ground the spot out if I ever get one I'll do that this is the most simplistic one I believe so let's go ahead and plug this in here because we still got to give this screen some power and that's what this red wire here is for now I'll show you it's going to be hard let me get something to point with here all right so right over here with these resistors right right here you have a d1 and a d2 we're going to go with the d1 in the top left side right here so it's going to be right right there now that's in a spot where if you're not careful you can bridge it very easily but this is going to be like a quick zap kind of thing that is definitely a small solder spot so we're going to see how it, how that does I'm, I'm, I'm curious myself all right so we're going to go ahead and tin this wire and i believe i have just enough tin on here to this is really going to be just a quick zap kind of spot right here oh man it is small I'll tell you what I'm gonna go ahead and trim it just a little bit because there's a little bit more exposed than I feel comfortable with let's see if we can zap her So just a quick zap. That's all it is. Let's go ahead and move this wire around one of these capacitors here just to kind of just to route it really. All right, now the uh, the only thing left here is to put it back together and test this thing out. I'm curious if the, if it even works honestly. I've never done this. Uh, but I I followed all the all the correct steps that I know. Let's go ahead and put the shoulders on cuz I always tend to forget that. Alrighty, like I say, my camera loves to die at the worst possible moments. Um, Alright, so the final step here is we're going to install this glass screen. And we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and pop this one. I should have took it out while I had that. Uh, but we'll be real careful here. Alright guys, so we got this out. Let's go ahead and remove this right here. Oh, that's a nice screen. Peel this back very carefully. All right, let's go ahead and blow this screen out. Make sure there's no hairs. Go ahead and set her down. see here all right let's throw some batteries in here and see if it's going to do what we want it to do see what this game is all righty put the game in let's see there we go i have to clean out the battery compartment if you ever wonder why Game Boy doesn't cut on, if you rub the batteries back and forth and you see that light flicker, that's an indicator right there that it needs to, uh, oh damn, I left something under the screen, I have to get that off. But that thing looks good, I'm happy about that. Console's clean, and it's back, let me turn this light off right here. Oh yeah, check that out guys. That is awesome. So anyways very happy about that that turned out pretty damn good uh, and that's not a hard mod I thought that was gonna be a lot harder than it was uh, turns out it's pretty damn simple now I did not do the 40 pin one which has a few more steps 
but maybe in the future we will. So I'm going to get this back to him. And uh, let's work on that DS that was sent in. I have never worked on a DS. This is definitely an episode where we're trying new stuff. Uh, but he said there was a part where he just needed me to solder in. He's not that skilled with a solder miner. Neither am I. Um, I just get lucky sometimes. So anyways, let's move on to that. Alright guys, so for the final project that I'm going to get done today, this DS was sent in and the connector for the ribbon cable, uh, he wasn't able to get it soldered on and I'm looking at it and I will say, that is some super small soldering right there. I can see why he had trouble. I've never done this. Hell, I'm probably going to have trouble. We're going to find out though. Let me show you here on the actual DS itself. This is what we need to fix and you can just tell those are some super small solder points this is going to be the type of soldering where i mean you blow on it and you probably can get it to stick uh i'm nervous about this one let me go ahead and plug my iron back up and i believe the tin is going to be enough for this one because i tell you that is small guys very small i'm nervous about it myself these these actual connectors right here are so tiny Oh man, we're gonna find out just how just how well we can do it. I don't know. We're gonna have to clean this one up and then hopefully it's not too bridged because when you have those real tiny connections like that, cleaning it's not the easiest. It, it's very hard to get rid of the bridges, at least for me. Uh, so once this heats up, I'm gonna turn my iron down pretty low too. I don't want that I don't want that burning and bridging very easily. Go ahead and get my plunger out here. So we got the iron. Let's go ahead and try to remove this old one. There's one side. Oh, that is so tiny. All right, so there's that. That's the old one that just popped right off. Let's assess this board, get rid of some of these old wires that were there. see that is so tiny right there that is just really small I do not know my success rate with this one but I told him I'd give it a shot I mean that's all I can do it's just one massive bridge everywhere About got most of it. And then it's like pain. I think mm, I even got too much tin on my iron for this one. All right, I, I'm pretty sure I cleaned that well enough. Let me show you here how it's looking now. I'm gonna double check. I might put my magnifier on it just to make sure that's not bridging. Let's go ahead. Mm, so small. Debating on how to do this. And I'm sure there's just people who have done this and they're looking at me like, man, not that bad but this is one that I have not attempted it doesn't look too complex I'm just really worried about a bridge oh that's clean there is no bridge there let me pull my magnifier out let's see yeah it looks clean all we got to do is nestle those pins on there and it should be good. I don't know how to test it because he doesn't have, I mean, I don't think he's got everything he needs here. Woo, you are tiny, man. Wow, that is so small. I've done small 
solder work like this before. Like if I've done the uh, the um, TV out on a Game Gear, and that one has some tiny ones to deal with, but this is some super small stuff. The biggest issue is to make sure that I line up the pins. Man, oh man. I wonder, mm, I can just touch it so easily and it gets out of place. Let's get rid of that solder that I put down. Yeah, just kind of get it down a little bit. Let's set this guy back in place and use what is there. small I got one side and that actually went in fairly well I'm confident I don't know how confident I should be it's too confident on that one Line everything back up. Yeah, you're looking, you're looking okay. I'm gonna add just a little tin to my uh, iron and just go for it. I don't really have much of an option on this one. Just a little tin. This is some tiny stuff right here. I'm just gonna kind of paint them on there. Wish I do I not have that wick up here anymore? That would really help. I don't think there it is. I do got a wick. That'll help. This is it's just so tiny. Still bridged, so I gotta I gotta remove that bridge for this to actually work. God, that may have done it. I got to get the magnifier out again, though, because I just can't see it that well. It looked pretty good. But boy, that is, oh, that is tiny. Well, I do see one bridge. Gotta get it. Yep. It's on there. I don't see any actual bridging. I'm going to call it. I'm going to say that is on there the way it needs to be. And I, I, like I said, I don't think I can test this thing because I'm missing. What am I missing on this thing? Alright guys, so this is as far as I can get. I don't think that I can test this thing. I don't have, I put that piece back on for him. It is in there. There's no bridging. So when he gets his home, he can reassemble all this. Because I have never worked on a DS and I don't want to lose any of these nice little pieces. Um, so we're going to get him to hopefully leave a message in the comments in a future vlog let me know I'll let you guys know did that work let me show you the final results here let me find all right you can see if I can get a good light well I can't do it that zoomed out that's what I replaced those fine hairs right there those pins are what I soldered fixed up there's no bridging that piece is where it needs to go. I don't see any other visual defects with it. So I will get this back to him and hopefully it does work. Like I said, I, I don't know. Um, so with that said, guys, I hope y'all learned something. I hope you enjoyed the 101 mod. That was my first one. I enjoyed it. I hope he does. He's gonna go, it's going to be mailed off to him tomorrow. 
Um, as always, guys, take care and enjoy the rest of your day.